All right, peace and love world. Welcome to another episode of Conversation with Zoe. Uh, today, uh, it's a dance hall vibe on this beautiful Sunday, you know, reggae vibes. We got uh, episode 119 featuring my guy Knowledge. Appreciate you for coming. Good, good. You know what I'm saying? Welcome, welcome to Conversation with Zoe, followed by Jay Walker. Yeah, yeah. And DJ J Styles. DJ Styles. DJ Styles, sorry. <laughs> DJ Styles. <laughs> Hey Styles, how's everybody doing? Good, we're doing yeah, good. Yeah, Bless, bro. You Thank you for well, having me. I'm hungry, but I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you know, we we got lots to eat after this. We can figure that out. You know what I'm saying? So introduce yourself to the world. For those of y'all that don't know, I go by the name of Knowledge, 2K5, and that's pretty much it. What have you been up to lately? Uh, a lot of soul searching, mental, mental health fixing. Just fixing all the errors that I made in life, I guess, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But having fun at the same time doing it. Yeah. Stuff like that. Just, just just enjoying every step of the way. I guess I just, I wasn't having fun before. I was I was making a lot of noise, but I wasn't having fun while I was making noise. So, yeah. So, yeah. Hey. Hey, Walker, what's the word, baby? I'm here, man. Just came off a crazy weekend. Voice is a little shot, but we made it happen. So I'm so proud of you, man. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you for having us, giving my brother knowledge and styles a platform. Word. 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 I'm yeah. happy. I'm happy. I see what you're doing out here Thank to the top. Palante. Thank you, man. As long as I'm here, you know you guys always have a home. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so sir. Don't be here a while. You know what I'm saying? So what does the 2K5 stand for? It's the year that my daughter was born. It was probably the best year of my life. I was born January 31st. It kind of set the tone for that year. And Styles kind of like, she's, this kid was like, I don't know how old he was, 10, 12. And we, we were over here in clubs, selling out clubs. And we didn't know what we was doing, but I just knew I had a daughter. And I, I, I kind of had to wake up a little bit and yeah. stop playing games. I'm like, all right, so if I'm going to chase this music, it has to, I have to make, you know, the formula costs a lot of money. Yeah. And and diapers and stuff. So it, it kind of, it really inspired me. I used to say 2K3, 2K4, you know, every year. Yeah, yeah. But when 2K5 hit, that year was just so good. If I could pick a year to Groundhog Day, it's going to be that year. Yeah. So I just, I just, it just stuck. And I'm just, I'm yeah. just always going to say it. But when I say it, it's me just, Thinking about my daughter and like the, the motivation, yeah, behind good. everything comes from that. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about fatherhood? Fatherhood? Oh, it's very important. Yeah, it did. I feel like it, it's very important. My dad was, my dad's a beast. He was, he was like, he taught me so many things. Like that's the reason why all this, the music stuff that I be doing, marketing wise, it just seems so simple. It's because of things that my dad taught me when I was little, and I. I never would have put to it. It's like I'm I'm older now, and now I'm realizing, damn, when he did that when I was five, that's the reason why I see this, and some of my own friends don't even see some of the things yeah. that I see. You know, we all get taught and raised differently, but yeah, I think parenthood in general, mother, father, even your extended family, I think it's all important. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Styles, what's going on? What's good, bro? How you living? I'm good, man. Can't complain. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Listen, uh, what made you become a DJ? So growing up, I was a freshman in high school. My be one of my best friends, DJ Heat, he's actually mm -hmm. the one who introduced me to knowledge. Yeah, he was a DJ, so we always used to go to his room. He had like two new marks, like cheap, cheap new marks. But we used to just go in there, practice, practice. Yeah. So he became like one of like the top DJs when he was a freshman, sophomore in high school. Mm -hmm. So I used to just go around, carry his crates. Mm -hmm. And just like learn off him, so mm -hmm. that's how basically I became a DJ, and he's mm -hmm. the one. What what year was knowledge. this? What year was this? Oof. Probably oh oh one oh two oh one. Okay, yeah, so yeah. eight and oh three. Okay, so yeah. we twenty joints. Do the math, yeah. baby. Yeah. Don't ever get years, it twisted. Twenty years strong. <laughs> so don't ever play yourself. <laughs> what kind of music are you playing around that time? Around that time, it's like. That time was heavy dance hall. Yeah. Like Mr. Vegas, Vibe Cartel, oh. Yeah, man. Katana rhythm. That's when like everybody was hot, hot. Yeah, yeah. We used to throw the house parties. We used to call them jams. Like yeah. it was crazy. We used to make flyers. 
Yeah, what a time to be out. alive. Everybody's passing them out after school. Yo, these kids don't know, man. Yeah. When the nah. cops come, you got to hit the there racks. No, there was no social media. <laughs> yeah, all the turntable racks. Yeah, there so, was no social media. <laughs> that's a fact. Yeah. And, and those are just memories that we shared in our head. Like, we, we felt like we were there. Exactly. But you said one word that's going to take me to that man over there. You said flyers. Yeah. <laughs> you forget how old this man is. Yeah. And you go back to the x Bar era to the club deep Avalon all that how do you how were you able to do all of that bro starts with a vision man started off with the marketing giving out flyers selling tickets went to booking venues to booking artists like this gentleman right here and start somewhere you know you just got to want to do it how old were you when you when you started doing this? Uh, when I first started getting in the entertainment industry, I was 13 years old. I'm 29 now. It's crazy. Yes, sir. My favorite saying is, I've been doing this almost 15 years. I ain't even 30 yet. You, you do, do the math. math. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so now, this, what does music mean to you? Uh, okay, so, so kind of like, I was kind of ignorant for a lot of years of my life. So I used to say, oh, I don't care about music. I hate music and stuff. But in reality, I love music. It's like been a part of my life. My dad had like a, she was like heaven. He had like the real to real, the turntable, the cassette tapes. He had like a whole thing. So yeah. when he was working on Saturdays, I was down there touching stuff. He'd come yeah. home like, it's not working. Did you hear now? I was like, oh, yeah. Touch it. it was yeah. me. <laughs> I would record over all his tapes. I would I would break RCA cables and find a way to make a, a, a microphone out of a headphone. Like I was I was very knowledgeable with like cables and plugging things in and, and that stuff. And I don't know, I just I had fun. I have a lot of fun mixing music. Yeah. I, I would like that, like the details of what what effects do and what your voice can do and and stuff like that. So it's it's like entertaining for me for me. It was like exciting. Yeah. And then in terms of making the music that I made, it was more uh, the story aspect. Like oh, I say ninety five percent of my songs they're real. Yeah. It's not. I'm not lying. I'm telling you a true story. That's what I mean. Styles click so much. It's like our friendship was like therapy, kind of. Yeah. I lived in Florida. He lived in Mass, where I was originally from. Yeah. He would call me venting about, oh, yeah, I just got into a fight, or this girl broke up with me. And I'm like, yeah, word. He sent me a beat. Next thing you know, he got the anthem for whatever situation he was going Uh, through. Super cool. And it helped him get through it. Yeah. But at the same time, it would it would push the music and he's playing it because it's how he feels. And then there's other people that felt like that and it just slowly blew up. And it's like Yeah. And it's not like we were telling each other to do it. It was just happening. Yeah. It was organic. It it was organic. It's not like, yo, I need you to do this. It was he would tell me a story and my way of being like jumping in the fight, you know, would be like, well, let me make a song about it. Yeah. And, and you know. I got you, Styles. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually said that. Styles, Styles, I got you. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's pretty much how, how it came about, man. Yeah. He yeah. forced me to do a lot of stuff. I was actually a, a gangster rapper at one point. Oh, what? A battle rapper and were all you, that stuff. Were you knowledge then or were you that was still another knowledge. name? It was well, knowledge, okay. but he was a rapper. I was yeah, a rapper. Was never like a dance hall. I wasn't a dance hall. He forced me to do dance hall. So I started rapping on dance hall beats. But yeah. then when Autotune came out and I got Autotune, because I could freestyle, he's like, yo, you should freestyle sing. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. This is around that time that. You know, it's like yeah, T Pain was hot. Yeah, you know, yeah, and and, and but there was still like gangster rap. It's gangster. I don't want to be soft. Two thousand six, yeah. more or less. We talking? <laughs> nah, just like five, six ish. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I tell him, I right. he sends me a beat and I freestyle. And you know, we rock with styles. He's like, yeah, it sounds dope. Just put words behind it. I put words behind it. and I sent it back. I told him, yo, you tell people that's your song. And at the end of the song, I say DJ Styles Two K Five. Because that was his MySpace. Yeah. But these days, it sounds like I'm saying DJ Styles and 2K5, so it worked out. But I told him, yo, tell people that's your song. He's like, yeah, no doubt. He started playing it. A year went by, and he's like, yo, 
you gotta come perform this. I'm not performing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was like the MySpace era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had it on my MySpace. Top 10 and all yeah. that. But when, he, but when he sent me the Zoo Rhythm, oof, that was a husband and wife beat. Mm -hmm. I almost threw that song away. I almost deleted it. And my roommate's like, yo, I'm going to work. If I come home from work, I'm gonna fight you if the song's deleted. Because he said that he would go to work often, come home, and the song he was singing all day that I made, I deleted it. Because yeah. I'm like picky, like, like especially with auto tune, because I don't, I don't consider myself a singer per se. Yeah. And he was right to keep that one. I remember when I sent it to Styles, he's like, "Yo, you're officially a dance artist." Yeah. Mind you, at that time, my rap stuff was taking off because I did a song called "Distant Love," and I had sold it to this group called the Honey Family in in Korea, I think, or North Korea, or one of them. They were pretty big, but I kind of went the dance hall route. Yeah. Was, so who who made the beat to husband and wife? Hopefully. Uh vinyl shots. Vinyl He's shot. a producer. It's a cool story. He's a uh, so when he sent it to me, that was his first beat ever, vinyl shots, and it was just like a remix, like yeah. a remix specialist. Uh Ed Rock, this kid that I grew up idolizing in my hometown. Well, his name's Easy Money now. Uh he he would chill with my sister, and one time we're talking, he's like, Yeah, I know you do the music thing. He's like, I'm gonna tell you the best piece of advice I could ever give someone. A DJ and a producer is your best friends. Mm -hmm. And I, I idolized him so much that I'm like, wrote that. And I always, I, I moved with, with, with that message. And because yeah. of that, that's why I met Styles. He and I had such good relationships with them. Yeah. And it worked because they were the ones playing the stuff. Yeah. And the producers were the one making, making the stuff. stuff. Yeah. So it made everything original. I could sell it, you know. Yeah. And I told Vinyl Shots, yo, I'm gonna bring it to America one day. Cause he lives in Germany. Yeah. And that was in like 2006. And I actually did it. He came in I think it was 2014. Yeah. Wow. We brought him out here. He was so excited. Yeah. Never been. We, we went to Boston. We drove to New York. We shot videos. We chilled with. We got to hear exclusive Drake songs. We had a good two weeks while he was here, and it was yeah. cool. He's like, "Yo, man, you promised me this, and you actually did it." Shout out to Vinyl Shots, cause that's a fact. Cause he, without him, yeah. who knows where this going. Styles, go. what's the what's the scene looking like? So when you think of, of Massachusetts, you think Red Sox, you think uh, <laughs> Patriots, yeah, but yeah, like. Yeah. I know a different scene that I witnessed, but you live it. What's this scene looking like in Massachusetts that the world don't know about? We got like a small town called like called Lawrence, Massachusetts. Yeah. It's kind of like, I don't want to say a mini New York, but it kind of is. It's like a mini yeah, Dyke. It's, it's like, like, it's like, it's like DR. Yeah. Real Dominican. Real Dominican. Some Puerto Ricans, but it's like super Dominican. Yeah. So they got spots out there like everywhere gets lit. They yeah. Like Shout out to Lawrence. I get yeah. a lot of love in Lawrence. Man. Yeah. Word. So they got spots out there. Like before, it was more like, obviously back in the day, people used to dance more and more. It's like now it's more like bottle pop and everybody yeah, just stands yeah. around. But it's still a vibe. It's a different vibe, but yeah. that's like kind of the vibes now in the clubs. But I mean, I'm not good for it every weekend, but one good perreo a month <laughs> could, do the, could do the so right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, was, yeah, yeah. that was the time, my brother. Uh, they got a night out there. It's called yeah. Perreo Sunday. Perreo, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they gotta get so out there. I'm going to Perreo Sunday, yo. That's a vibe right there. That's so you're Dominican. Yeah, 100%. Right? So how does a Dominican raised man end up in dance hall? Well, so it's interesting because... Both my parents are from DR. I was born in California. Yeah. Oceanside, uh, the Marine base, because my dad was in the Marines. But uh, I was raised in Lawrence, Mass. But I've lived in Tampa, Florida now for like 10 years. So I've always kind of been all over the place. But in Lawrence, bro? Yeah. Lawrence? It's like dance hall, city. dance hall city, bro. Yeah, gotta, like I'm talking about, we'll bring Mr. Easy, yeah. all these big dance hall artists from Jamaica. They'll come to our town and be like, "Y'all like this song? Y'all yeah. know this stuff? This this is old, but we don't care." It's yeah, like it was just such a vibe, and we just we, dance. Yeah, we literally got our own genre. It's, it's called it's, Nine Seven Eight Dance. Yeah, Nine Seven Eight Dance Hall. Dance hall. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, like my what my music sounds yeah. like. But that's what they would call it. Uh, that's just, cool. 
And and I've always, because that's what they played. I was always with them, and they was always playing dance hall. Yeah. And I thought the, I thought I, I wish it was still like this. I like the rhythm concept. Yeah. Where it's like you got the rhythm, Five and then you got on one rhythm, like, ten yeah. different songs. Can you imagine you put out a, a hot beat, and you get a Drake song on it, a Beyonce song, a, yeah. a Jay Z, uh, NBA Young Boy song. It's yeah, like yeah. you get to hear different vibes yeah, on the yeah. same Everybody's beat. Everybody's twisted the song. That, I think that's cool because yeah. you, you you get more use out of the beat. So yeah. you know, and different vibes and and different concepts. I, yeah, I yeah. love that. So I thought that was cool, and that's pretty much how. How it went down. A lot of people thought I was Jamaican. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Who were who were your early musical inspirations? Woo. So uh, shout out to my sister because this is all because of her. It was well, okay. When I was younger, it was a lot of Spanish music. Yeah, like Anthony Santos. And yeah, Antonio Rosario and all. It's like it was a bunch of those people. But then my sister, she's four years older, so I felt like she was always cooler. And I would steal all her CDs. And it was like uh, Puff Daddy, Biggie. Jada was my favorite growing up. Yeah, Jada Kiss. Uh, Jada Kiss. Facts. I used to, I used to, hey, yo, I got land calls. Yeah, I used to rap just like yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything. Yeah, that's what knowledge was rapping for. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah, and oddly yeah. enough, Crazy, that's how I got my name. Yeah. Styles, cause Styles was oh, his oh, favorite rapper. And Styles we didn't P. know each other. It kind of <laughs> just, it kind of just, yeah. that's just how that's it was. Hard. That's it. That's, that's just that's how it was. Right it's like, like bro, it yeah. was written. It's crazy. Yeah. It was written. And, that's and, and, and we didn't know each other through that that whole yeah. journey. So so Jada Kiss was like my favorite. Like, like he was my, my favorite growing up, and Biggie as well, and Mace. Yeah. The whole bad boy thing, yeah. I liked what was going on. And aside from that, it was just a bunch of radio stuff and mixtapes. Oh, DMX too. Oof. Yeah. Well, you know the whole the whole Y.O. Yo, Yonkers. Yeah. yeah. DMX was was huge one. He I used to love DMX. He's like yeah. The only person that like will make you cry and then get you mad, hype you up to fight someone, and then say a yeah. prayer and forgive for everything. He's yeah. Done. It's, like, <laughs> it's like yeah, DMX was big. But yeah, I would say I would say Jada. Oh, and one twelve too. Yeah. So when I was doing dance hall in my head, I was like, I want to be the slim of dance hall. Yeah, I like that's, that. That's that's what I used. This to is do. right up my alley because I'm a big R and B guy. So <laughs> yeah, bad boy, you know, one twelve that whole. Era. Yeah, to me, I felt like, and I was thinking this a long time ago, and I feel like the industry caught on now. But I always thought that when they said R and B died, to me, I'm like, it should transition into dance hall. Because it is kind of R and B, you're yeah. still dancing, and it's just like, with yeah. a bop. It's, it's just, just with a bop, yeah. yeah. And that's what's happening, yeah, now. with the liquid wine to it too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Look up songs on Apple Music now too. They have it on the R and B, even yeah. if it's like yeah. a dancehall song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jay Walker, drill music, right? As a promoter, how are how are we getting that scene together? What's that scene looking like in the clubs? I'll be honest with you, I'm not really a fan of the drill music scene. Um, certain people sound cool, you know. There's certain people I'm listening to right now, shout out uh, Didi Osama, shout out J Star Baller. Those guys, they killing the scene right now, salute to them. But um, other than that, I'm not really too much into that. I'm a dancehall kind of guy, real yeah. hip hop fan, you know, that hardcore hip hop we came up to. Diplomats, Locks, Terror Squad, yeah. you know, shit like that. All right, so what does what does a Jay Walker party look like? Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> Everything I touch turn gold, baby. You yeah. Heard? Just know, yesterday we actually did two events, two cities, two states, two clubs, one night. Wow. You heard? We had the team party out there with Didi Osama, 1,500 teams sold out. That was amazing. Drove back, party, a knowledge birthday party in City Island. Oh, yeah. That was sold out about 350 in there, water walls. So... We just blessed to still be doing it. You know, for me, with knowledge, we've been doing this for 10 years now. Him and Styles been together for longer, but we, I'm just thankful to just still be able to do what we're doing and yeah. keep going, you know, making money and have fun, like he said earlier, while we're doing it. Absolutely. Styles, who were your early musical inspirations? Early, early. Jay-Z was at the top. Biggie. Same as in DMX. That's how I got my name. Styles, Styles came from Styles P. So I yeah. was picking between DJ Exclusive 
with yeah. DJ Styles. So I was like, <laughs> nah, I think Styles, yeah, 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 Styles yeah. was a good look. I was like, my favorite rapper, Styles P. Let me just chop off the P and just go with Styles. Yeah, Styles, yeah. So I, I like that. Listen, That's yeah, smooth. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, so yeah, I used yeah. to listen to the locks growing up. So yeah, all of them. Yeah, I love that. Um, I know Styles P is on the Math Hopper show right now. They've yeah, been dropping I saw that. clips. Yeah, I saw that. I think one thing I love that he's displaying, one thing he said that even though he was never really into the school route and all of that, he loved to read. Yeah, yeah. he wasn't scared to right? be Right, he wasn't scared to be a, be a nerd. nerd. He wasn't scared. And I think yep. that's cool for the kids to see yeah. that even the most primetime gangster dude you could think of yeah. is a reader. Yeah, he's yeah. educating himself. He's educating yeah. himself. That, that was... And I think that's super important for the kids to see yeah. that like, you don't got to be flying dumb, as I always like to tell the kids. Exactly, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's beautiful. Do you remember the first song that you ever recorded? Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember how it goes. Yeah. But I remember recording it. Yeah. I had a, my dad had got me a, a karaoke, and my friend Chad came over when we were young, and he, there was this girl that he liked, and he's like, help me make a song for her. I was like, I don't know. Okay, whatever. I don't remember what. Back in the days when you bought single tapes, it came with the instrumental. Yeah. And okay. I don't remember what instrumental it was. He just hit record. And he just starts, baby, I want to be with you. It was like really <laughs> weird. <laughs> it, was, it was weird. Yeah. Uh, and I just kind of did the ad lib like, yeah, he likes you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. I just, that was bad. Man. It was bad. That was like my first official song. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was bad. It was funny. <laughs> it was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> so do you remember your first show? Yes. Well, okay, so there's different okay. There's battle shows and mm -hmm. there's performance shows. Does it Give matter? Us both. Let's go battle. And let's go. So battle. Yeah, was, when you was a gangster rapper. Battling yeah. battling was easy because so as a child, my my dad taught taught me a potential of details. With, with the most effort, he he put a long story short, he put a quarter ten yards away, gave me a BB gun with a scope. I kept trying to hit the quarter and I couldn't. And after a while, I walk up to the quarter. The quarter's right here. All the BBs are right here. So I realized the scope was off. I made an adjustment. I hit the quarter. So at the yeah. age of five, he taught me adjustment, attention to detail. Just because it's a scope doesn't mean that it's gonna be on. Yeah, you know. So you gotta test it. And pay attention to detail. So I took that into battle rapping. Yeah. And I wasn't saying anything crazy. Yeah. It's just that it was coming all off the top. So like uh one of my first battles, I, I like I wanted to jump in because like the guys sucked. They were just not saying anything. Yeah. And I had so much like details around me. Yeah. And I I'll never forget this, man. I jumped in and uh something, something, I just I just had one line. Cause they didn't let me continue after that. Now yeah. we want to hear that I line. Said something, though. something, something, something. Stay weak and tell your girl to give me space like her girl's front teeth. Yeah. And when they looked, this girl had the biggest gap ever, <laughs> and she was smiling. Like, yeah. Everybody's like, oh, I got carried. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm just getting started. I love What's that. What's going on here? I love that. So it was like it was. It's not like I was saying some like I'm not lyrical. Yeah. I'm just detail oriented. Okay. And I'm freestyling. So like yeah. you know, if you drop something, I'm gonna say that, and it's gonna rhyme and sound smooth. And when you notice, like, yo, he's really spitting. What's happening right now? That's yeah, pretty yeah. cool. So so yeah, that was that. But my first show, my sister. Shout out to my sister. Yeah. Sister is the reason for a lot of things. Yeah. But she she I went to this youth center. She's like, yo, you gotta perform. I'm like, all right, cool. I go and they're like, yo, just make a rap about positivity and not giving up. I was like, okay. So I made this rap and I remember I grabbed the dictionary and I tried to look up what struggle meant. Yeah. And I was like, labor, content, urgently, aka struggle or some weird stuff yeah. like that. And I kept practicing because I was so nervous. I kept practicing. You know, it was their buggy. <laughs> and we used to have beef, battle beef, and yeah. he's in the audience. So I'm like, man, nervous. And I remember I kept saying the first line over and over around the dancers. And they're like, dude, why do you keep saying the line? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. So when I went to perform, I froze. Mm. The beat dropped. And I'm like, Ugh. Yo, yo, bring it back. Bring it back. You brought it back. I'm like, <sighs> yo, bring it back one more time. And I, I, I kept... I kept wanting to start with the right word. I looked to the right one, and the three dancers are like, 
neighbor, we're content. Because I said it so much around yeah, them. Yeah. They said the first line. I'm like, ah, run it back. And then I'm like, labor content urgently, aka struggle. It can really cause your life to fumble, whether you're whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And what worked out by the end of it, I made it seem like it was an act. Yeah. And I was like, you see, just like I did, struggle to get through this. I didn't give up and I got through it. Right. So you never give up. And everybody's like, oh, they thought I planned that. Yeah. But no, I was really messing up at yeah, the beginning. That's cool. So so that was cool. I remember my first battle rap in a club. It was bad. I, I battled GB. Yeah. I told my dad about it for some reason. And it was like a, a bracket tournament. And when I get to the battle, I'm about to battle my friend because that's the way they picked it out of the hat. <laughs> it's literally, they dropped the beat. I start spinning right now. I see the door open. My dad walks in. Mm, in the brutal. audience. I'm like, I'm not about to say this. Sh- I'm about to say <laughs> yeah. with my dad. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Yo, so I just spit a random verse I had. It wasn't even a diss. Yeah. <laughs> had to switch the whole thing. <laughs> I switched the whole thing. Yeah. 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 My like, dad was like, hey, man, I'm sorry, man. I, I know you weren't yourself because I, I showed up. Yeah, damn. At least he was there for support, though, you know? <laughs> that was the wrong one, though. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that. Like, I feel that. Like. So, so, Jay Walker, man, you've been hosting a long time. Yes, sir. Uh, do you... What adjustments have you made over the years? Like, how did they start off for you hosting parties, and and what what adjustments have you had to make? Um, a bunch, you know. From when I started, there was thousands of venues that used to allow a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I would say now, it's a lot of venues that won't allow the shit that they used to allow. Yeah. Not only that, the New York market. I can't really speak for Mass. Um, Styles could talk a little more on that, but um. Uh, New York market, I would say, is watered down. The money that people were making in the clubs seven to ten years ago, compared to what they're doing now, I know for a fact is a, a big difference. Yeah. And people that's in the clubs locally are in the clubs because they have no choice. Yeah. When I'm in the club, I'm in the club because I pick and choose when I want to be in that club. Yeah. But this this whole system out here is all washed up. You know, my advice to y'all is get it how you could get it, or and. If you could relocate and start fresh somewhere, just get out your city, you know, because there's more opportunities in different cities. You network with other people, and that's how other doors are open as you go. Yeah. So that's pretty much my advice. It's that's crazy, what... though. That That's a real thing. Like, I go to a lot of cities, and it's like a big thing in every other city is straight from New York, DJ yeah. blank. That's a thing. Yeah. Like you, you come from New York, they'll pay you more in another city just because you coming from New York. Yeah. Right. That's, that, that's, that respect is still down the whole East Coast, bro. It's yeah. kind of crazy. Right. That's that's a great point. That's kind of like I said, what I just mentioned. Like I pick and choose what I want to do. Like I don't got to do a club in New York. I do yeah. one club out of town. Yeah. In, in one month. And people in two months won't even make what I did in that one night. Because yeah. like he said, from New York City, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's a fact. You know what I mean? Styles, how many nights are you DJing a week? Oof. About three to four now recently. Mm-hmm. So I do like three to four. It's not like New York where you could just do like back to back. We yeah. close like at yeah, one or two 12, over there. So 12, uh, you're only one, doing two. like one venue. <laughs> yeah, you can't so really have like New York. Off. They're doing two, three venues a yeah. night. Out in Boston, you do one. And that's about it. Yeah. So the options are pretty limited yeah, more or less. So like, yeah. yeah. What's your playlist looking like nowadays? Well, oh, that boy had City Island on fire yeah, nah, last you gotta, night. You gotta, it depends. It depends where you're at. All man. right, what was last night looking like in City Island? Last night, of course, knowledge was there. So they a lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they wanted the dance hall. A yeah. little bit of dembo. A mm-hmm. little bit of reggaeton. Everybody loves Bad Bunny now, so you yeah, gotta yeah. throw that in there. Shout out to Gordon Homado. That's my guy. <laughs> that drill. Yeah. That drill's hot now, so you gotta play it. Mm-hmm. Old school hip hop. So that's pretty yeah. much like what I play now. Got you. But I feel like. The difference between before and now, like people used to go like to, just to see a DJ back in the day. You'd be like, oh, Styles is there. We're going to see Styles. Or like Jerry's there. It's like a big DJ mm-hmm. in my hometown. Yeah. So that used to be like the way. We're going to go wherever the DJ is at. Now it's like, yo, where the most fire bottle girls at? Like, yeah. They yeah. don't really care. Bottle girls, they don't or, really care or, the they got hookah? Anymore. They don't got hookah? Oh, yeah. Okay, so cool. it's like hookah and bottle right. girls. That's yeah. what. <laughs> that or, or can we smoke in there? Yeah, can we yeah. smoke yeah. weed in there? If not, I don't want to go. So yeah. that's kind of like. Me, it's kind of weak in food. It's kind of weak in the DJ game. So that's kind of like 
weaken the DJ game a little bit. So it's yeah. kind of like harder just to like book gigs as consistent as before because they're like, where can we get the cheapest DJ at? They don't yeah. really care about oh, the name anymore. Real. I definitely yeah. like, agree do it with for that. The cheapest? Yeah. That's what they really care about now. So gotcha. it makes it a little harder, but you got to adapt. You can't really like just sit on your hands and knees and complain. Yeah. You got to just go get it. Why, why, why? So how'd you end up with the name knowledge? <laughs> and why is it spelled wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, my, my first rap name was Flame. Flame. And yeah. my friend was Horrible. Lighter, and we were HM Hot Materials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. And I remember I battled this kid in school. I beat him, but I went home like I did not win that battle. Because he just, he kept flipping the name Flame. So, uh, I got home and I was like, I, I made a song when I made the Buggy diss. Yeah. It was like around that time before that. Shout out to Buggy. We cool now. Uh, right before that, I felt like I got better. I was like, I'm I'm nice now. Like I, I had confidence. I already had confidence, but yeah. I hit a stage where it's like, I'm nice. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. But that flame got to go. Like, so, yeah, 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 yeah. so I look at my uh, my tape player and it said video. But the VI was off, and I was like, I'm going to call myself Dio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the next battle, that guy shredded that name, too. I'm like, nah, Dio got to go. Dio yeah. got to go. Nah, that's so, a bad name. Yeah. So <laughs> the guy went through all strange you know, we, bad names. When they say, yo, what do you want to call it? I'm like, I don't care. It's always been me. So yeah. I used to go on the chat line. You got the Boston Donut. And I don't know if y'all remember the chat line, but you just talk in conference rooms. And there was these dudes. There was Luciano, Gambino. They had cool names, and it was just a group of us, and we just have cool conversations. I guess in every conversation we talk about, I would say some, like, useful information that they were like, how you know? That's cool. Or that's, yeah. that's, that's dope. So they're like, yo, you need a name, because my fake name used to be John S. Bonds. Yeah. Like John Stockton, because I used to love him. Yeah. So they're like, we ain't going to call you John. You need a cool name. And they're like, we're going to call you Knowledge. So... Fast forward to the Dio thing. I went back to the chat line days. I was like, you know what? I like knowledge. I'm going to call myself knowledge. Yeah. And then I, I drew it. I have like one of the ugliest writing ever. I wrote it out. And K is like the hardest letter for me to make look pretty. Yeah. I was like, I'm not putting a K. I'm just, <laughs> and, and then I, I, I put the N-O and the O was shaky. I'm like, nah, I'll do an A. It's easier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I literally wanted, I wanted to feel comfortable spelling yeah, yeah. it. Uh -huh. So N-A-W-L-A-G-E, it's like, it's easy for me to spell. Yeah. Like if I got to spell it for the rest of my life, I'm not spelling it the way y'all want me to. Yeah. So yeah, so that's, that's how that came about. It's you. How'd we get to Jay Walker? Jay Driver now. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great question. Let us know. You know what I'm saying? You're talking um, to me? Yeah. How'd you come oh, up with the name the Jay name. Walker? I've known you as Jay Walker half your life, but I've, I've never died. known. I mean, you were just Jay Walker one day to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I've been around since it's been it, you were 12. It's been Jay Walker since since young. Um, I remember my cousin Mike. Before Jay Walker, I used to call myself Mr. Biggs. Yeah. This is when the Osley Brothers was This is a 12 year old out. calling himself Mr. Yeah, Biggs. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Those, I was, to those videos, bro. I love those videos. Back I, I, I was a little heavier. Yeah. Maybe like 40, 50 pounds heavier. I had the long hair at the time. So <laughs> I was going with Mr. Biggs, either that or Mad Skills. That, yeah. I, that's what I was calling <laughs> oh, myself my too. Yeah. Until I found out there was actually a rapper with that name um, from Virginia. So. It went to Jay Walker, my cousin Mike. He had a studio in his house up in 241st at the time. I would go over there. He told me one day, um, get on the, begin the beginning of the song and just say something like try to hype it up. Hi hype, hype up, basically hype up the record. So that's what I did. And then at the end of the day, we walked out. They used to sell nutcrackers at the corner store and we crossed the light. It was red. I mean, pause. It was green. Yeah. And we crossed the light. He said, yo. He said, Jay Walker. He said, that's what I'm going to call you from now on. He said, I like the way that shit sounds. And I was like, I said, yo, I ain't going to lie. I kind of like that. And yeah. no funny shit. We just end up running with that. Yeah. Shout out to Mike. Shout out to Jay Fane. Uh, they was recording music back in the days. Back yeah. in the days. Like the first ones doing shit at home without an engineer just trying to figure it out. You know? Yeah. So. I love bro, that. That's how that came about. 
Love that. So we're gonna really we're gonna tap into a little dance hall trivia a little bit. Oh, you know what I'm boy. saying? And uh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope I think I did I think I did my thing on these, but let's see. Uh, Spice or Lady Saw? Uh, Styles, help me. <laughs> I don't even think he knows who Spice is. I don't know who Spice, Spice or Lady is. Saw is. Oh, <laughs> I put spices in my food, oh, yeah. like, and the lady yeah. saw me eat it. Spice, Spice. <laughs> Spice is more relevant now, but yeah. I feel like Lady Saw is like she a legend, so yeah. I feel like. Is Spice the, the girl the, from Love and Hip Hop? From Love and Hip Hop, yeah. Oh, nah, nah. He's thinking about Ice Spice. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah,
let's just throw him on something that's hot. And then we're like, well, how the hell can we get a hold of him? And Sir J. Walker, Mr. I annoy every artist and get their attention somehow, because that's what I do. And they're like, yo, can you get us French? He's like, yeah, say no more. You know, he talks with Big Head. And he calls back in 10 minutes like, yo, come to New York on this day. Bring this much money. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, bro, you know what I'm playing. And that's it. So we went and we, we literally went to Puffy's studio. It was called Daddy's, Daddy's House at house. the time. Man, we were there for like 20 hours, it felt like. French must have did like a like bunch of features that day. And we were the last ones. And Chinks Drug was there, R.I.P. R.I.P. Chinks. They had some, some girls there. And they heard like a bunch of hip hop. So by the time we went in, they're like, oh, we're not doing videos. Just so you know, if you want videos, don't even do the feature because we're not doing videos. Like, oh, yeah, that's cool. We played a song. <laughs> Shit turned into a club in the studio yeah. like uh, this. The girls is dancing. They're singing the song. And they're like, yo, you know this? Is so French is like, yo, this song out? I'm like, yeah, it already got millions of views. This is, yeah. this is, this is just, you're just on the remix. Yeah. So he looks at Gabi. Shout out Gabi. That's uh, J.I.'s manager now. He, he was managing French at the time. And I don't know, he kind of nodded at him. Then he started speaking to my manager. Then I guess we were going to do the video. All yeah, of a sudden. Okay. All of a sudden yeah. So he did the one verse. And then he walks out. And I'm like... I purposely left space at the end too. And I'm like, what about the second verse? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm doing a second verse. I'm like, yeah. And he just went back in and did yeah. the second verse. That's so. And that was that. And then it and then they liked it so much that they did uh they put it on Coke Boys 3 and, and stuff yeah. like that. And uh on the Tim Tim the Tim Westwood interview, he had said that they had Movado on it. Yeah. They were gonna take me out, put Movado. I don't know, they were gonna make some moves, but somewhere along the line. No one agreed on something, but it was cool. It was it was a it was a good moment. Yeah. So do you feel like that kind of saved things after the Rick Ross? So where did things go wrong with the Rick Ross move? Well, for me personally, is that the song wasn't a knowledge song. Yeah. It's like my beats were, you know, like you want to dance. Yeah, yeah. So anytime. Yo, we got a song on Rick Ross. Oh, yeah, you got a song on Rick Ross. It's a, you play the song, and it's like, oh, Ross said your name. That's cool. All right, can you put husband and wife on? I want to dance. Yeah. Gotcha. You put 21 plus on, I want to dance. Like, people, when, when you heard knowledge, for those of you that don't know, go by now, it's 2K5. And actually, any person that, that's been a part of my music, you're thinking about dancing with your favorite guy or girl. Yeah. That's what my music is. Yes. It's finding the person that you like, and let's dance. Yeah. And whatever happens after that, it happens. Love that. So when you hear the Rick Ross song, <laughs> yeah. that's not the vibe. Yeah. It was like more like today's vibe. All right, let's listen. Yeah. Can you, what's the name of the song? Let Me Do Me. Let Me Do Me. Okay. Yeah. You can, say, find, you that can find that on YouTube. You can find that on YouTube. Yeah. Let Me Do Me. Okay. He says, knowledge, I got your homie. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. I got kicked out of the session. <laughs> yeah. Word? Damn. Yo, we had, we had a McDonald's uh, and... We're just sitting there. Then we go to the session, and he has these big ass security guards. My yo, this yo, that shit was like a movie though, because we forgot the money. They forgot to bring the money to pay him, uh, and he was about to leave, and we all got sad. And then shout out Yaks, Yaks like turned into a super saying. He was like, "Rose, you're not gonna do this to me. You call me real. Let me tell you." He's like, "Let me go get the money. I'll make sure you get it." Yo, it was crazy. It was like a movie, bro. Yeah, Yaks went, got the money. He came back and, and I, I remember he paid him in like mad ones. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm in the session and uh, I, Ross is recording. He did that shit in one take, boy. He's he's creative. He wrote yeah. like the alphabet on the paper and he writes really nice. So I'm recording him. I'm like, yeah. Because I remember one day I'm in my living room and there was a bunch of, a bunch of people. And I was like, I'm going to do a song with Rick Ross. Everybody paused and just laughed at me. Yeah. I cried that night. I was angry. I'm like, you think I'm joking? So yeah. and while I'm in the studio, I was excited. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to send this to everybody that's in there. Security's like, he's on this side. He's like, yo, stop recording. I was like, oh, my bad. All right, cool. So I go on this side. And I know there's uh, another one on this side. Man. And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, didn't you just hear him? I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> so, so then I go like this. 
<laughs> and they can both see me from the reflection. Uh, like, oh, man, you got to get out. But they didn't know I was an artist. Oh, uh, okay. So as I'm walking out, you hear Ross like, where knowledge at? I don't even know what he look like. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't even really get to interact like like yeah. like uh like I did with French and stuff. Gotcha. What's the biggest show you've ever done? I would have to say I mean I've done I've done like a huge like festivals with a lot of people, but they weren't all like responsive to the music. Yeah. But I would say sofa lounge if we're talking like so for if we're talking about uh, the amount of people knowing the words, yeah, I've done a show with more people yeah. than that, but just like they didn't know who I was type yeah. stuff. But Sofa Lounge, was, that was that was crazy. Yeah, that was. I, I remember not. We weren't even expecting it. Uh, he was here. You you had some other gig. Yeah. We all met up. Yo, I literally pulled up with like. 25, 30 people. Yeah, because I'm like, yo, this is gonna be dead. Let me bring a bunch of people. So that, you know, our pictures look lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, they were all mad at me. It was so packed that I could only get three people in. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't want nobody in. They didn't want the cops were like, we don't care who you are. You only bring three in. And and that was Jay Walker Promotions that day? <laughs> yeah. Jay, Jay Walker robbed me that day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that, though. <laughs> what is it to talk about? You know how much money they made that night, bro? Uh-huh. These guys, Tom, were, these, Tom guys, these guys were coat checking. <laughs> yeah, 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 smart though. <laughs> yeah, they, they're smart. Yeah, they made a lot of bread that night. I know that. I didn't even get paid that day. I did, real. I did a freebie. So Jay Walker, knowledge. are you? Are we doing <laughs> Diddy deals? What we talking about? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it was him though. It was like it was a whole group of. Yeah, I, it, it's really my fault. Our fault for not being prepared. Like yeah. I literally was we like, didn't, we didn't know how big. We didn't we know. Were. Well, yeah, no. We were giving out like yaks. Uh, we would buy a lot of CDs, and we probably printed up. Yo, I have pictures of like CD burners, and we printed up probably eighty thousand CDs. Yeah, we would come to New York, or they would every week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, go to the high schools here, 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 and it was hard to do because in New York, they say no. Yeah, because you know they don't want to be strong. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, twenty books. Yeah, <laughs> we're like, no, take it. Look, it's free. Take it, take it. Yeah, yeah. So. Doing that the year before is what made Sofa Lounge be so big. Yeah. But to us, we didn't think it was working that good. Sofa Lounge is the one in Harlem, right? What's it called now? No, Sasa, Sofa, Sasa so, Sofa, Sofa Lounge is nah, Sasa Con Fuego. Sasa That's in the Bronx and Fordham. Mm-hmm. So before Sofa Lounge, it used to be x Bar. It's, okay. it's the oh, same. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So what was the one in Harlem? Like 126 or something like that? Oh, that that was Leather Lounge. I, I, I used to Boom. do that one also. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So at the time, let me just touch on that a little bit. When we brought Knowledge to Sofa at the time, I think it was so big because Knowledge was the first artist that we booked at that venue that never performed in New York. Yeah, yeah. Dur- never... dur- during his peak. So at yeah. this time, he's hot. There's other hot guys like Vado just came out. We had brought him first show ever. Uh, Cameron, he was always there. French used to come out. We used to book a bunch of guys on a weekly basis. Zion and Lennox, um, yeah. Daddy Yankee, a bunch of these guys used to come and perform for for cheap, basically. But when we brought this guy, a lot of these dudes were locals. You could go to certain places in New York, certain airports. You would see a lot of these people. Yeah, you were. Yeah. I'm not. So, so you were considered them locals at the time. Not that he wasn't a local, but you would never see this guy. You didn't yeah. know what he looked like. All you know was the name. And the songs because oh, everybody's local, playing it. But I'm not local to New York. That's yeah, another right. misconception. People think I'm from New York yeah. from how big the music was here. But I'm from Boston. Yeah. So people would always, I would always, talk, I remember I would talk to people online and stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my brother chills with him. He was just with him yesterday. And I'm sitting here like, from. Oh. Not even in New York right now. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> Let's cut. <laughs> so yeah, de- definitely a good time though. Legendary night. It was yeah, about thirty five hundred inside, yeah. about twenty five that didn't get in. Yeah, there was a lot of people outside. Yeah. And that was two thousand ten. So that was yeah. almost thirteen years now. You know, uh, Jay. I just want to say thank you for always coming to get me in the line. You know, maybe I never said thank you for that, but now hearing these stories, yeah. you know, <laughs> listen, hey. <laughs> That's love, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always good, you know what I'm saying? Cause any anybody that was family or home team, we always make sure we took care of them. But I had this method when I would go to the club during those times, I walk in and as soon as I walk in, I turn my phone off because I don't want people calling me. I tell the security they ask for me, 
I'm not even here. I'm busy. I can't. Oh, yeah. It's nothing personal. It's just a bunch of things going on when you try and do the business thing. So if I ever made you wait two, three hours, whether it was a thunderstorm, a blizzard out there, or it was just a nice cold day, and you was waiting to see my man Knowledge or anybody just to have a good time, I humbly apologize. And yes. thank y'all for supporting us for numerous yeah, years. You know? some, some people don't see how tough it is. Yeah. Like, friends, family, everybody, yo, you got to get me in tonight. My brother, Clo got to make money, too. It starts adding up, too. Yeah, yeah. it starts adding Everybody up. Everybody got to get paid. The bring, DJ got to get paid. The host got to get paid. The artist got to get paid. I bring 35 people. It's $40 Security got to get paid. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. You got to look at the bigger picture. Yeah. You know, everybody just see the good time, but but they don't see the what goes on behind the scenes, you yeah. know? Yeah. So what would you say, what's your favorite city to perform in? <sighs> if, if I would say New York, but I just don't like the traffic. <laughs> Traffic is just, if you remove getting to the venue and paying for things, I'd say New York, but I got to say Lynn. Lynn Mass is my absolute favorite. That yeah. city is just, I don't know if it's because we're not from there directly like Lawrence. You know, we know a lot of people. I'm like a local there. Yeah. But Lynn is lit. You know, it's like, it's always a good vibe. Yeah. It's a lot of pretty women. The guys are super like supportive. It's just. I like Lynn. Lynn has been like my favorite city to perform. My favorite city, though, I just want to comment on that because I be out here touching the towns too. And mine for the past 12 years, Allentown, Pennsylvania. I'm like the mayor out there. I get so much love. When it's all said and done, they might put a statue of me out yeah. there on Main Street. Real talk. You've been in PA since in high school. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Allentown was probably the reason you. You, you ain't finished, so you dropped out, or whatever happened. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, listen, I'm going to go do this party. Y'all can keep that diploma. You right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was gone, so nice. Yes, sir. Tell us, some, can you, can you get, give us a get, recap of, of, of how that how that went down? Like, what was so, the conflict? So, yeah, uh, a lot of people don't know. I ended up going to a boarding school in Pennsylvania, me, Zoe, a few people that we all grew up together at the Boys Club in New York in the city. I got a, a full scholarship to play baseball in PA. So I went out there, and at the time, we were already throwing these sofa lounge parties. I'm 12 mm -hmm. years old. I'm making two to 3000 a week at, as a kid living in my mom's house in the eighth grade. Yeah. So now I'm going to this boarding school. Now I got to stop making this money. All right, cool. I'm going to get the education. I'm going to play the sport that I love. But yeah. I'm making real money at the time as a kid, more than my parents was making at the time. Yeah. This is real talk. Um and it was over after that, bro. Word. Yeah, tell you. So, who are your top five DJs in your city? In my city, I start Styles, obviously. In my career, uh, I say Jara after that because after Styles, Jara was very he was an instrumental role in, in pushing it to another level. DJ Heat, because he like, yeah, and these are these are like biased answers. I'm not like going by like who DJ nah, This yeah. is just my. This is your five. These yeah. are just my five. DJ Heat, because he was like early on. He he's he's the reason why I even know everybody uh, that I know. And then DJ Fingers, who I think is one of the nastiest DJs in this world. He's just underrated. He also produced some of my records. But I like him. He, he does so much more than just DJ. He doesn't just DJ. Um, and then the fifth one, oof, it's it's like it's it's a toss up. It's just there's most wanted. There's Turtle. There, there's Kalo. There's, there's Hova. There's Classic. The, the I I can't even give you a fifth one because yeah. it's just it's like anybody from that nine seven eight era to me is like the fifth one. Yeah, because everybody is like that instrumental in in pushing the movement. Like, yeah, these guys, yo, they always FaceTiming me. Like, yeah. yo, I'm playing your song right now, and I always pick up. I always try to pick up those calls. Yeah, because you know it, it's cool. It's cool for them. And it's cool for me. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of there's a lot of love out there. Yeah, there's so. three I want to shout out too from out there that I always show love every time we used to come down on foreign chubby chub and oh, yeah, shout foreign. out to Lust as Lust. well. Yeah. That's what always I'm saying. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but th those are the three that Sam embrace Smooth. me. Sam when Smooth I used to come well. fuck with knowledge, they used to op open Sam, the doors Sam for Sam us. Smooth you know? yeah. always played me on the radio out there. That's why I'm saying that fifth one is 
It's tough. I can't we, pick we, one. We got on there. We, we're going <laughs> to show love to everybody. So, Jay Walker, uh, top five DJs in New York. Top five DJs in New York. Well, I was affiliated with All Pro for years, so I'm going with my dog, Pro Style. I mean, definitely number one um, in New York. Damn, that's hard because there's so many dudes. New York, New York. I like Clue. Clue is dope. Um, who else? Who else? Damn, son. That's a hard question, so. Got three left. That's, that's, a, that's <laughs> a hard question. Sheesh. I party with all of them. Don't be mad if I don't shout you out, but um, damn, damn. I like Drewski. Drewski, Drewski's yeah. dope. He's up and coming. He's catering to the upcoming talent right now, so that's yeah. always a bonus. Oh, damn. Two left. I don't even know, bro. There's so many people. I like Spin King. I like Spin King. Spin King is a young dude. He's out here getting to that paper. S salute to Spin, my Libra brother. Uh, one more, one more. Damn. My man Prince One. I got to shout, shout him out too. He's one of the DJs that I came up with, gave him a platform, and he's still doing his thing. Uptown, the Latin market, killing him, you yeah. know? Shout out to him. I guess you're... you're doesn't have to be New York or, but as a DJ, yeah. who are your top five? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. I'll say from my area, I put Jero one, Lust two. I put Heat up there just because he's the one who put me on. Yeah. Uh, DJ Classic, he pretty much taught me like oh, yeah. all the technique of DJing, mm -hmm. so I got to put him up there. Yeah. And then there's this young kid coming up now. His name's Ronnie Flea. He's okay. really good. So I like yeah. the way he DJs. What do you think makes a good DJ? I feel like it's like a whole bunch of different intangibles you need. You need, I feel like now in this era, you need a mic game. Like, so if you have like no mic game, it's going to be tough for you to survive as a DJ. Yeah. You got to know how to blend. Mm -hmm. You got to have good taste in music. Like you got to know what music is trending. You yeah. can't just play like old school music all the time. Yeah. You got to stay like relevant mm -hmm. for your music. And you gotta adapt to the to the time yeah. and to the changes as it go, yeah. cause the scene changes every year, every few months, there's a new sound, there's a new artist exactly. that's hot. You gotta adapt and know what's going it's on crazy. to keep up that momentum. Crazy. I might not like drill music, but I can't just not play it. That's yeah. what they like in the club, that's what I gotta play. So yeah. it's just a yeah, it's just like he said, adapting. Cause for me, the biggest pet peeve I have with DJs, <laughs> maybe it's cause I'm an engineer, is when their songs are EQ'd differently. Mm -hmm. One comes in with mad bass, and the next song comes in low, and there's like no bass. Yeah, like for me, that's I'd be sitting here like, man. And, and it don't help with a shitty sound system in the spot neither. So yeah. those two is, is the worst combination yeah, you could get. There's a bunch of upcoming DJs from all over. Though. I want to shout three of them out. Shout out my man Hectic all over PA. He's going crazy. Big Kev out in Norwalk, Connecticut. And my man Meese, upstate New York, Woke NYC DJs, Moses Midas out in London, he representing. We got cats all over, so shout out to them. That's fly. That's fly. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. So, the Bronx wine, yeah. right? So, how impactful was your music to the Bronx wine culture? I mean, to be honest, I, I'm not even the one to answer that question because I, I feel like I, I see how impactful it was, but I didn't get to live it. I was just kind of making music. Like, yeah. again, this goes back to the details of my dad when he told me to pay attention to details. I just knew that one song hit and it was kind of doing, so the yeah. beat needed to have a certain bounce. Mm -hmm. So I told all my producers, yo, whatever that is, that's what we need, that little bounce. Yeah. And the first one, one of my boys made, shout out True Young, was By Your Side. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's that little bounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we made, and then I, I, I'm thinking like by your side because when they were dancing, they'd be by their sides a lot of the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, let me kind of throw that in there. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't, I, like, I, like, the reason why I say I don't know is because I wasn't literally in the Bronx and watching these things, but I could see on YouTube. Yeah. It's, everybody was doing it. And it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowledge been going viral on the internet before viral was even, I uh, mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, before, yeah, it before it existed. Thing, this is yeah. real talk. You go on there, there's kids dancing to these records from 10 to 13 years ago, just going crazy. Yeah, even, Millions of views from all over even, the world. Even before that with my rap stuff, they used to see walk. Yeah, Numbers yeah, don't lie. Uh -huh. What was that? What was TikTok before? 
Uh, it had a it had a different name. I feel like if that platform didn't die, the Bronx one would oh, be even bigger. TikTok was kebab. something else first. Um, and I was starting to get traction on it that. It starts with a V. And Vine, then they, Vine. Vine. There you go. I was starting yeah, to get, Cali, I was starting to get yeah, traction yeah. on that. Yeah. And then they shut it down. And then that's kind of like why it never, the dance never kind of blew. Because by the time TikTok came, it, it, the wave had already died. Yeah. The Bronx one yeah. was, so, was so big for the dance hall culture, especially here in New York. I mean, I could really speak on it a little bit because... I was there. I, yeah. I, I, I was front line with it. I was yeah. on stage hosting these events, and I'm just seeing these kids. At first, I thought it was so stupid. Yeah. Uh, me, me personally, I, I was never one to be in the parties doing them. Yeah. I love watching other people do yeah. it because the way people used to yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. go crazy yeah. with it, ah, with yeah. the shoulders and the, <laughs> everybody throw the guns in the air. And, hey, but shout out to everybody yeah. around the world because that was something different. And for us, for the dance hall culture, for yeah. knowledge, for certain artists, that was a part of it. It was yeah. a big thing, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful thing. I mean, I know I was the the beginning of the the world, the, the, the heart of the reggaeton era and all that and the dance on the reggae. Yeah, so I love Bronx that. Wine came out, I think I was around 18, 19 or so. So I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? All of that. It was cool though. It was a good vibe though. But like I said, it was fun. It was innocent. It, it was all love. You know what I'm saying? It was a good vibe. It was a good yeah. energy in the club. You know what I'm saying? I feel like now I don't, I couldn't imagine what the club. I remember my now. first show when that was a thing. Yeah. The song dropped and all I see is the crowd heads. <laughs> Everybody going and I, in the and I, and I, and I, and I like, they're not even looking at me. They're looking at each other and everybody's yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> and I go to the DJ, is this normal? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, the Bronx wanted it. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. all right, that's what we're doing. And I see like the 70s with the hip bump and all that. <laughs> yeah. That's when they lost me. When they started the hip bump, oh, I said, nah. Oh boy starts yeah, kicking yeah, his butt yeah, with his yeah, leg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You lost me. The show, the, the movement, the, when they started that, with the, yo. you know, Marsha Brady and all that, yo. I was like, nah, you lost me. Yo, whenever I was down, bro, I swear, I used to fight with my ex a lot. Whenever she got me mad, I'd go on YouTube. And watch the videos. Bronx wine videos. <laughs> yeah. There's this dude with the red pants, bro. That, that dude used to kick himself all the time. <laughs> Then what what yeah. what was Shorty's name that used to help us a lot? She was viral on the internet too, that she used to do dances to every record. I don't remember from Jersey. her name. Damn. I, I totally forgot her name, but shout I don't out to you. Her name. Hopefully I think she it was watches Lynette this. or some shit yeah, like she, that. She did the she danced with her boyfriend to husband and It wife. went viral like yeah. 50 she million made a, She made a, she made like a, a video year. on YouTube about recently she, talking about crazy. About why she too. took it down and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and I, I still shout out and I show love, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm going to just let you know if you're hearing this, you didn't make that record pop. I'm going to tell you what it is. That <laughs> record was hot before French got on it, before I got involved, before yeah. all that. And this is coming from somebody that was there front nah, line. She yeah. did so say, you did not make it pop. She did say that she you helped, the song you up, played but I was just kind of like, okay. You did a video, it went viral, and that's cool. We appreciate you. We done took you out to dinner. We done did all type of shit to... Show our appreciation. So just be thankful for that. And life goes on. And I on. appreciate yeah. everyone who, who helped throughout the way. But I always tell people, the only person that I feel comfortable, and he'll never say this shit either. The only person that I feel comfortable saying they made me or made any song of mine pop is Styles. Yeah. Because he, he literally forced me here. You're going to do it. Just do it. I don't care if you like it. Just do it because I like it. I'm like, okay, whatever. Here you go. He's like, don't worry, I'll blow it up. That's that's literally yeah. what he told me. And I'm like, this, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm crazy. like, I'll let you think he's gonna blow that up. Yeah. Okay. And he was right. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. Trust the DJ, trust, trust the, the process. Yeah. And that was in 05. Yeah. yeah. So when everybody says, Oh, I blew that up, but you ain't heard of me till 08, that's not adding up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. True. Tell us about your relationship with Jay Walker. Uh it's 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 love and hate. He loves me too much. It's kind of <laughs> like a, like my mom and dad. Like right now, on the way here, I'm sitting in my boxes trying to watch football. We got to go. We got to go. I heard you, mom. Uh, you told me 145. Yeah. It's 130. We got to go. 134. <laughs> but but he's loving. You know, he cares. He's he's always been like uh like like loyal and and anytime Anytime someone talks crazy on a post, he's the first one to comment. Hey man, hit him up. You got his phone number. 
You know, why why are you putting that out there? Why don't you hit him up personally? He's always he's always got my back. He's always had the best interests. We we shared some amazing stories. Um Cool stories. <laughs> Some not cool stories. Yeah, okay. good times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's like Styles and I. It's funny because like me and Styles kind of started everything, and then like we kind of went our separate ways, but we didn't go our separate ways. Like he was just doing his thing, DJing, and I was kind of doing my thing with the free world people, and that's when Walker came along, and Walker was kind of like my styles for that era because like his stage presence to me, I like it. Like he, he, he'd be up there saying some shit and I'm just like, I would never say anything. Yeah. And he'd be up here like, where my single leg is at? Where, where? Yeah. <laughs> Crowd control, baby. Yeah. Everybody can't do it. Like Styles said, yeah. a lot of these DJs could DJ, but they might game is weak. Pause. Yeah. You get a DJ that could pop that shit. Let me start DJing in 2023. I'll yeah. take a lot of these cats out of business. Real talk. Especially yeah. when, when like your sound system goes down. Yeah. You if need the sound that. system goes down and Walker's there, I'm like, yeah, you give good. me 20 minutes, yeah, no like, music. Like, yeah, I'm going to still yeah, shake that shit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Love that. So we're almost out of here, but from your point of view, describe the music industry. Uh, I, okay. Trying to figure out why. So I I work I work with uh, mixed by Lex and Dan down at Grand Bay a lot. And um, where's I, Grand Bay? For those in Tampa, that don't Florida, know. my bad. In Tampa, Florida, that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last ten, eight, ten years. While I kind of stepped away from music, and uh, I don't know, I feel like it's in an interesting place. I don't I don't know if you're talking. From an artist standpoint, or from the business, or just overall, uh, we can go artist than the business. From the artist standpoint, I just feel like it's oversaturated, and people are putting too many songs out too fast. But that's just my personal opinion because I really like to marinate in music yeah. and, and really soak it in and enjoy it. And yeah. then they drop another one, another one, another one, and it's like I can't keep up. Yeah. I got so many artists that I like that it's hard to keep up. And then from the business side, it's like they're the ones that's ruining it to me. Like they're the ones that want you to rush and put more out so they can make more money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that want to sign younger artists. Not saying that I don't think the young artists should be doing their thing, but they want to sign younger people because they, they can do more. You know, they can take their royalties easier. They can, hey, here's twenty grand. I just made two million. Like Yeah. So it's 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 a it's a messed up industry. But I think it's cool for an artist because you can do whatever you want now. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not like back in the days, it was hard to find a studio. Yo, my boy took his iPhone, plugged in his interface and a mic, and we made a song, and it sounded better than most of the songs recorded in people's studios that are yeah. big. So from an artist standpoint, you can do anything. It's cool because you can sell T-shirt online. That creative control. You can you know? have yeah. creative control. You can find the, the hottest producers are selling leases now for 20 yeah. bucks. Yeah. So it's it's cool, but gotcha. it's it's interesting. Yeah. So let's touch on the mental health, man. You know, how's everything going mentally and, and uh are you in a better state today than you were uh, of recent times, recent Yeah, years? I'm definitely in a better state than I, I was recently. And then now I'm about to be in an even better one because I, I realize that I have sleep apnea and I need to sleep with like a sleeping machine. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that. So like for the longest, I kind of just, I, w I would be able to sleep whenever, like on command. Like I could fall <sighs> right now, literally, if yeah. I wanted to. And it's because I'm not sleeping properly. And that contributed into, it just goes, if you don't sleep, the rest is just slowly going to yeah. deteriorate. And that's literally what was happening. And it's like, I'm being more conscious of it. I'm going to start working out and eating right and just doing a lot of the things that I wasn't doing before, caring more about the people around me, family and friends, because I was all over the place before. It was yeah. kind of reckless. We were drinking like five days a week. Yeah. I was getting paid to go do shows and drink. Wake up the next day, do it again. <laughs> like, it was yeah, so like, hard <laughs> to not turn down liquor because it was just coming. Yeah, it's yeah. free. Four bottles yeah, a night. It's like bottles. everybody facing the bottle. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and it's free. <laughs> to yeah. a it's point free. that you wake up feeling disgusted, smelling yeah. like honey or type and of And you got to do it again to not the feel next like day. <laughs> Yeah. 
Damn, it was some good time. times, but but it, it was, was some good, rough but ones, it was you like, know? yeah, that's toxic as hell, bro. Oh, bro. Now I, I smell a shot, and I'm like, I'm good, bro. <laughs> Why? Last night the girl gave me a hard time. Yeah, because she brought the bottle, and I was like, hey man, can you bring me a pitcher of water? She's like, we don't got water. <laughs> Shout out <laughs> Leslie, took forever with my chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So I'm glad to see you doing better. Um, What's next for you in uh, 2023? Oh, I'm about to do some... I got some cool thing coming there. I don't even want to explain it because it's like going to kind of ruin it. The sweater is a part of it. Yeah. I will say that. Yeah. I've been purposely wearing this sweater everywhere for the yeah. last year and a half. Yeah. And I'm saying that here now because people don't believe me that when it's a part of a story, they're going to be like, oh, wow, he wasn't lying. All right. So, yeah, that's why you always see me in this sweater because it's... it's, it's it's a it's a it's a marketing thing I got with this song. All right. But I'm I'll make sure that you you get it first when it comes out. All right, cool, man. So part two, you know, we can look out for knowledge part two. Oh yeah. Coming out soon. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're always welcome here, especially when you're in New York. Um for those out there, you know, it's winter, it's getting dark early. You know, if you're struggling with your mental health, definitely get out there, do something positive, productive, make a music, uh, work out. I don't know. Do yeah, something biggest, that makes you feel good. The biggest yourself. thing I can say about mental health is don't be scared to talk to someone. Yeah. Because when I opened up to my friend Dan and my homegirl, she, it's like it was tough. I didn't want to, but I opened up to, I wanted to open up to a guy and a girl about what I was going through. Yeah. And it helped a lot. It, it, it helped a lot. And they were giving advice. All right, let's do this. Let's fix this. Let's do that. And shout out to she and Dan because... They're part of the reason why this stuff's growing. And then I got rekindled with Styles, and it's like he always inspires me because I haven't seen him in years. Bump into him, he got a car, he got a crib, no kids, he's making money, you know. So yeah, it's yeah. like I'm back with the people that that's always inspired me. Beautiful. And seeing that they progress, so you know, it's it's time for me to do the same. So yeah, if you if you can talk to anybody about it, your doctor, your friend, your strangers, yeah, me, whoever. I feel like it helps a lot. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. And, and to add on to that too, always check on your peoples. You that's know, like yep. give them a call, shoot them a text message. The same yeah. way we on the internet, we on social media. Like we got family and friends that really go through real life shit. Yeah. And you don't know how much just a conversation will be able to help them get through the day. You Seriously, know, so yeah. just check on your peoples, the ones that you genuinely care about. Send them a message. Send them a text. Let them know, yo, you good? How you doing? Anything I could do to help? Whatever, yeah. you know? I love that. And I, and I can attest to that because, Jay, you, you pulled up on me not too long ago. You came to my house. Mm -hmm. know I'm saying I came downstairs. We had a cigar. Random. I'm, I'm Random spur of the moment. You but know? he does call, though. He yeah. does call. He texts in, gives you ideas, you know. So definitely uh, uplift those who uplift you. So I appreciate you. Welcome, I appreciate real. those kind of words. Zoe and knowledge those words earlier. Word. I appreciate all y'all. Thank you. Absolutely, man. So we're going we're going to turn Lawrence up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, take you out there. Going, I'm bring you out there. Sunday or Sunday. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact, you know. But definitely for everybody <laughs> out there, funny. make sure you like, subscribe, comment, go follow the So where can we find everybody? Knowledge, where can we find you? Uh at the real knowledge. Knowledge.com. N-A-W-L-A-G-E dot com. Or you can find everything there. Or you can just Google knowledge, N-A-W-L-A-G-E. Yeah, pop gotcha. your shit, pop. WokeNYC.com, that's the clothing line. BougieBarkNYC.com, that's the pet company. TheRealFronto.com, that's the tobacco company. Jay Walk, like I said, I've been doing this almost 15 and I ain't even 30 yet, nigga. At Jay Walker 165. Talk to him, Styles. At DJ Styles, DJ S-T-Y-L-E-S -E with a Z at the end. Mm-hmm. There's too many DJ styles, yeah, so I had yeah. to add the Z. I hear that, that, man. You know, Just to so, get a unique. You know, sh sh sending mad love out to Massachusetts. You know, Tampa, Two mass legends everybody. in the building. Y'all better recognize <laughs> when y'all see these faces right here. That's a fact, man. So, you know, I appreciate everybody for their time. Uh, we're going to drop this next week. You know, one love. Take care. Yes, Word. sir. Thank you for having us, though.